Great. Thank you very much for um, inviting us this morning. Looking forward to speaking. And I'm, I'm Alison. This is Stu. That's probably obvious. Um, and I'm going to hand over to Stu. Hello. I feel a bit self-conscious because I uh, <coughs> forgot my blazer. Um, my name's Stuart. I'd like to tell you a story, if that's okay. It's the story of how I first broke my hand. I don't know if you can see the lump there. I was about 13. And uh, my secondary school was, was a bit rough, you might say. This particular time, we're in the, what we call the hut, the drama hut. It's a very dark timber cabin with very few windows, painted black outside. It was kind of felt a bit daunting to approach. Several classes would often end up in there if they were short of teachers. So there were three or four different classes in there, maybe 100 or so students, one teacher at the front, trying to keep control and not succeeding necessarily. I remember my eyes were on my page, probably pretending to do whatever work I was supposed to be doing. I'd sort of gained a reputation for being someone who, who uh, was easily provoked that became an identity that I attached myself to. I was often ending up in fights and outside the headmaster's office and that kind of thing. This particular day, what over my shoulder came this fountain pen ink cartridge that had been popped open and thrown at me. It landed on my work and spoiled whatever little work I'd done. The teacher kind of saw what was going on but felt fairly powerless to get involved stood up and I turned around and I saw, stood up behind me a few rows back, a kid called Joe, who was someone I'd, I'd had a bit of trouble with, and he was laughing at me. And I felt furious and wasn't sure what to do. Felt like I had to take it into my own hands and I stood up and I walked over past several students, picked up his exercise book, ripped it in half and just chucked it on the floor thinking, ha, ah, I win. Anyway, we ended up in a bit of a fight and he managed to get my jumper up over my head and I kind of, he got the better of me, basically, of the physical exchange before the teacher finally made their way there and separated us. And being the one that had approached him, I was seen as the, the one that had provoked the encounter and I was, I was kicked out. And as, as I walked from the back of the hut to the front where the door was and, and through all the rows and rows of students just feeling the eyes of everyone on me, just feeling the shame, the embarrassment, feeling like I'd been beaten, I had to get, I felt I had to get some sort of power back. And as I approached the, the door, beside the door was a big panel of wall and several steps away and I thought, I'm going to punch a hole in that wall. I'm not, I'm not to be messed with and I need to be the one that threw the last punch. So I swung at it, bang, as hard as I could and my, my hand exploded. I felt the bones shatter inside. Everyone saw this. The wall was fine untouched and the pain was searing burning stinging just excruciating i gritted my teeth knowing that everyone was watching me the shame i was feeling was was more powerful than my than my need to scream out in pain you might notice it doesn't sound like there's a lot of kindness in that story and i wonder were someone to, to act in a kinder way, how that story might have turned out differently. We're talking nearly 30 years ago, and, and still now, cold days, I wake up and my hands sore. I remember those feelings, that, that, that situation. 
and that choice. We've talked about, within that story, the level of, levels of unkindness. Yeah, there's a whole load of different unkindnesses that I listened to. And I just wanted to say, I'm really sorry you had that experience. And I wish somebody had said that at the time. Because you kept it secret, didn't you? I hid it away. I, couldn't, I felt like I couldn't tell my parents for one reason or another. Partly embarrassment, partly I thought I, was, I might get a hiding. <laughs> so when I was at home, I, I, I pulled my cuff down. Like this. My fingers were blue, but I managed to hide it for weeks. I couldn't hold a pen. I used to wrap it up when I was at school so the teachers knew I was injured. <laughs> yes. So the unkindness seems to be on loads of different levels here. I mean, there's the unkindness of the person who provoked you, and then you had a fairly unkind reaction, and then the teacher as well, but we have to have some sympathy for the teacher, I guess. Yeah, looking back now, I feel really quite sorry for the teacher, actually, who was there, you know, trying to maintain control in a, a rowdy classroom. You know, several different subjects at the same yeah. time. You know, we wonder about, we've been talking about the, the unkindness of the system as well. And unkindness towards yourself. Yeah. I mean, the pain. I can't imagine not getting any medical treatment for a, a smashed up hand like that. Yeah must have been pretty tough. And I don't know how many of you relate to that story. I mean, maybe not an actual fight, hopefully not an actual fight, but maybe stuff like that has happened to you. Um, for me as a woman, I don't want to be too gender orientated, but I haven't actually been in fights. But for me, the unkindness comes through this. It comes through speech, and now even more through the phone, you know, which is on, can be on 24 hours and able to hurt us. And maybe all of you relate to the possibility of unkindness through speech and through phone, social media. So anyway, you might wonder why we're talking about unkindness when we've come from a kindness festival. And the reason is that sadly it's quite often sometimes easier to relate to the opposite than the thing itself. So if, it's quite hard to define happiness, but pretty much all of us know when we're unhappy. And it's similar with kindness. Sometimes Kindness comes into sharp relief when we think about unkindness and our wish to have less unkindness in our life or even to maybe try and get rid of it altogether. And there's a few bits of good news about this. I was brought up with the saying, a leopard can't change its shop spots. You know, you're, you're either born kind, not kind, strong, not strong, all these different kinds of things. Now, some of you may have found you can actually change your physique. You can build your muscles in the gym. And over the last 10 or 20 years, the new field of neuroplasticity has shown that you can actually change your brain as well. So if you want to be more kind, if you want to be more caring, if you want to be more empathetic, there are ways to learn how to do that through practicing it. And you create literally neural pathways in your brain. So something that we do a lot is like a motorway in our brain, and we're more likely to go that way. And then something we don't practice very much is more like a sort of wandering path that's getting overgrown by grass. So that's one bit of good news. You know, if you're interested in this subject, if you're interested in being more kind, it's definitely something that you can work on and you can do. And I like the quote from the Roman Emperor Mar Marcus Aurelius. He says, the only thing you've actually got control over is your own mind. Quite an interesting thought, that. The second bit of good news is that a lot of research, again, fairly recently, shows that kindness and things like that are contagious. They've done experiments, even with babies, that if a baby sees something, somebody doing something generous, like giving a, a sweet away, the baby will do the same thing. And technically, it's called mirror neurons. I mean, if this interests you, I'm sure one of your science teachers can expound on it. And I think we've all had experience of that ourselves, haven't we? When a situation is bad, it often carries on being bad. Whereas when we see people being positive, being helpful, um, it goes around and it, and it tends to come back to us as well. Yeah, it's true that anger breeds anger and kindness breeds kindness. Yeah. And you can see it on the, the bigger stage now, the international stage. And sort of re to relate like what's going on, it might seem a bit far-fetched, but the Ukraine situation, and, I, and I've been thinking, like relating that back to my story, you know? So, so someone throws the ink cartridge 
Well, I'm going to tear your book in half. Well, then we'll end up in a fight and one of us might win. But then someone has to throw the last punch, even if that's a self-destructive act. You know, it, it, you can relate it back to different stories and situations and scenarios that you guys might be able to relate to yourselves. For me, that feeling of not wanting to be, well, wanting to be the one that throws the last punch, metaphorically or literally. Whereas I'm inspired by what can happen on the opposite side of things. I mean, if you think that every baby is born kind, something happens to us along the way where we actually can develop the propensity to not be kind, even if we want to. But just imagine a world where we did all learn to be kind and to realise that that was in our own self-interest as well. So we wouldn't have people having to choose between feeding themselves or keeping warm in a wealthy country, which is what's happening in the UK now. There wouldn't be a war in the Ukraine, and there probably wouldn't be a climate crisis either. So just wanted to leave you with those thoughts. And Stu's got a final question. Yeah, so just to wrap up, I mean, maybe you could spend a bit of time this week reflecting on a question which is quite simple. And that question is, what does kindness mean to you? Thanks for listening. Thank you.